What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I give my analysis on the most recent Halo Infinite update that was given out by 3 for 3 Industries. In my analysis, I give the good, the bad, and the ugly. Does this update meet the expectations of the Halo community, and does it give it a clear path back to success? I answer all this and more, so stick around to the end. This is Marsman Gaming. So in my short reaction videos here, I always try to give the good, the bad, and the ugly because every time you see some sort of event like this, I feel that it's best to try to break this down into several components and not always focus on one way or the other. So when I look at these types of events, I try to say, all right, here are the positives, here are the negatives, and boy, here is a straight up ugly so let's just jump into it first off with the good in my opinion i think forge looks fantastic three for three came out and showed off the kind of the beauty of this new forge that has been developed and when you talk to joseph staden ign as well as others had basically said what was the limit of what you can do in this new update essentially joseph staden had kind of mentioned how halo 5 up to date was considered to be the largest forge that we've seen and when you compare halo infinite's forge to that one it nearly triples the size of the amount of items and types of layouts that you could possibly do in this upcoming update. Now, in my opinion, I think that is such a fantastic thing to see because Forge in, within itself is just incredible what you can do with it. We've seen all the leaks before and it's kind of funny how Joseph Staden as well as others had kind of mentioned the fact that it's like the Halo community is using these leaks that magically went out into the wild, almost acting as if they weren't the ones that were kind of leaking them out. And essentially, when you look at these leaks, a lot of people made some really interesting things. I mean, I've had videos before discussing what was shown. Like, for example, people have made straight up zombie maps from, from Call of Duty World at War, as well as things you would see in Star Wars Battlefront games. And I think that it's really cool to see what the community can make with Forge. And just to give you a perfect example of this, Joseph Satan came out and said, hey, here's are some new maps being dropped this upcoming winter update. And these are made in Forge. And it's so difficult to really tell the difference between a 3 for 3 made map and a Forge made map because essentially they are nearly identical. And I think that is a great thing to see because Forge is going to really change the game based on what everything 3 for 3 has shown us, what we've seen in the league so far. The second thing I think is a pretty positive here is that we finally get actual dates of knowing when things are going to drop. If you guys remember back when 3 for 3 had first given us their quote unquote roadmap, they essentially gave us what they call stakes in the ground. They will give us certain time periods to look forward to. In this new update they gave us, you actually did see specific dates when new modes, new maps, weapons new features will be dropped and how long these events will last for and i think this is just a breath of fresh air because three for three has shown to this point that they struggle to know when things are going to drop the last positive i'm going to talk about is essentially getting three months of a content season battle pass i think one of the biggest things i've noticed right from the very beginning of halo infinite being a live service game was essentially that three for three had struggled with making content seasons actually enjoyable for the entire duration of the time being played and one of the biggest flaws that people have said when they saw these different season passes was that they would last for six months and majority of the time they would be barren having a hundred battle tiers or hundred tiers on a battle pass being expanded over six months of time if you're a halo fan like me you can easily get that done in half the time and that means for the remaining three months you don't really have too much to do. But with a three month season battle pass being used in the winter update and in the official season three, it now gives us content that we can actually play and have fun with in a shorter span of time. And we will get more updates in, a, in, in kind of a quicker fashion, which I think is gonna be better for us in the long run. Now with the good, we have to talk about the bad. First things first, the fact that we get a delay on both Forge and co-op network play is obviously a bad thing i mean obviously it's pretty you know, annoying that every time 343 3 says hey it's gonna drop at the end of august and then what happens it comes out in november or forge coming out at the end of september well it's coming out november now it seems like 343 3 can't really finalize a date and actually land on it and i can't tell whether it's because 343 3 is not a massive company and the resources are just barren or they basically are trying to ease up the work for their employees so that they don't feel 
really overworked and people just leave. And the other negative I found when I looked at this update was it showed really how bad Season 1 and Season 2 of Halo Infinite really were. I mean, think of it this way. The Winter Update and Season 3 of Halo Infinite's Battle Passes are going to have more content than Season 1 and Season 2 combined. Season 1 and Season 2 lasted for essentially an entire year. And this Winter Update's going to have two maps added. It's going to have Forge. It's going to have co-op network gameplay. It's going to have new modes new weapons possibly, new events that are free, and a battle pass that is essentially free for everyone to use. So you're telling me in three months span, I will get all those things. And in season one, we didn't get a new single map, new game modes essentially for half of it. BTB was broken for majority of that. Season two gave us two maps finally. And it seems as if we were able to get more content in a winter update than we were for an entire year of Halo Infinite's lifespan. And then season three is gonna give us even more content than that. Halo Infinite first year of the game essentially gave us little to no content to play. While the winter update and season three are gonna show that what they have in store in the future is way more than what we had previously. So it shows the failures of what the first year of Halo Infinite were when you really look at the future of what Halo Infinite has in store for us. And with the bad, we need to talk about the ugly. First things first, one of the biggest things I saw from this update, and most Halo fans can agree to this, the failure of canceling co-op split screen for Halo Infinite. Bonnie Ross several years ago was quoted in stating that Halo is built on the idea of playing with the people around you, whether it's friends or family, on your couch at home. And that they had failed on that aspect in Halo 5, and she did not want to feel that same mistake again in Halo Infinite. And she, as well as others, had promised that Halo Infinite would arrive with a split-screen co-op, whether it was at launch or in the near future. So today's announcement that Halo Infinite will not be supporting a co-op split-screen was devastating for a lot of people. And I understand completely the feeling that they have because me, I have played split screen co-op ever since I was a little kid. That was part of the, actually, the main reason why I was even able to play Halo for the first time ever. So I understand the impact of not having split screen at all in the Halo game. This hits deep with a lot of the Halo community, and I can understand why they are just really disgusted with this idea being put out there. It was definitely one of the biggest disappointments from seeing this update, and I can understand why a lot of people looked at this as being the biggest news that came away with. But in my opinion, the worst part of the update or the ugliest thing I've seen from this update by 343 was essentially the proven fact that 343 can't land on anything they plan or tell us they want to accomplish in their games. Since Halo 5, it seems as though the Halo community has been torn to shreds because they have basically been on the opposite ends of the spectrum of whether they should hate 3 for 3 or they should love 3 for 3. It seems that a lot of Halo fans have become toxic against even each other over the concept of whether they should be angry with the direction of Halo or whether they should still support 3 for 3 going forward because it's still their favorite franchise. Now, the reason why this all started was because of the fact that 3 for 3 had promised us Halo fans a lot of things. They promised us a really in-depth story with Halo 5, showing two different perspectives and a marketing campaign that was going to show Master Chief go rogue and Locke chasing him down, and then lying to us straight up in a marketing campaign when they show us what the campaign actually was. And from there on out, Halo Infinite arrives with a split community. A lot of people were looking at Halo Infinite as being the make or break game for them. So essentially when the Halo Infinite comes out, at the very beginning, it was well liked. When you look at Metacritic, it still hits around that 86 to 87 range in the overall critic rating. However, if you ask most Halo fans, they'll tell you that they aren't happy with the direction of Halo Infinite due to the fact that there's a lack of content. So when you ask Halo fans about this update and whether or not they feel better about it, most people will tell you that they feel even more disgusted than before. Now, I think the partly the reason why this is the case is essentially because most Halo fans were excited to see what the future of Halo Infinite was. They wanted to see whether or not Halo Infinite was going to be filled with content 
because that was the biggest flaw that it had since the beginning. And 3 for 3, unfortunately, has shown that they have been unable to meet the expectation that Halo fans have for them. Showed that 3 for 3's biggest downfall was they're unable to land on any of the goals that they place going forward for any of their Halo games. So when I'm looking at this overall verdict of what I think about the update and what it does for Halo Infinite and even to the Halo community, I have to think about this in a few ways. When looking at the positives, the one thing I'll say for what this update does is it does give us content of what we should expect for the future of Halo Infinite in the next six months. Forge looks really cool and I'm really excited to see what it can do and how far I can go with it. We have a general landmark date of when this content will arrive and at least it shows us what you have to look forward to in the future. However, at the same time, the issues are that there are constantly delays happening with a lot of the different things. So in a lot of cases, you can't really trust some of these dates that 343 has put forward. And obviously the cutting of major features or updates that a lot of Halo fans held dear to them makes this update feel sour to them. It feels like every time you get an update from 343, that you can't really be completely positive. It feels like every time they tell you something, it's always a good news, bad news scenario. Like, Forge looks great. There's a bunch of content on the way. Free battle pass, but we are cutting split screen co-op. There's never a time where you just hear from 3 for 3 and say, wow, I can't wait to see what comes next. It's always a, wow, that was pretty cool. But what was that last thing you said? And that's kind of the issue I noticed with 3 for 3. I've had several videos already on the channel that have basically talked about what 3 for 3 needs to do to fix the problems for the future of Halo Infinite. Do I think that this is the end game, the judgment day that a lot of people have given Halo Infinite? No. One thing that this update does is it gives content of what Halo Infinite is going to have in the future. But at the same time, it shows you that this game should be living up to more higher expectations than what we are currently seeing with the game. Halo Infinite has a better foundation than Halo 5 or Halo 4 have had, but their biggest downfall is they're missing even pieces that crappy Halo 5 had in the game at a later date. And unfortunately, all these different events that have happened over the past few years have caused Halo fans to become more toxic towards 3 for 3 than ever before. I don't know what's going to happen from here on out, but one thing I'll tell you is that there will be content to play on Halo Infinite, and I'm sure as time progresses, there will be more things to enjoy. Unfortunately, it seems that 3 for 3 has been unable to match the expectations of the fans, and this might make them untrustworthy with the community. Thank you everyone for watching. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. If you want to support the channel, please join us on our Patreon, and that is located in the description below. You can also join us on our social media, on Twitter, and on Discord, and that is also located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace. <laughs>